Hello, everyone. This is Tony, CEO and co-founder of Shop Black. And today I'm joined by a very special guest, Miss Tiffany, Mrs. Tiffany, the Virginista Aliche. <laughs> yes. Get it right. Well, I'm going to appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> So Tiffany is an award-winning financial educator, for those who don't know. Um, she's also transformed the lives of over a million women worldwide. She also co-founded an online school, the Live Richer Academy, which te teaches women worldwide how to take their finances to the next level and achieve their personal goals. How are you doing today, Tiff? I'm also, and I'm also a new author. You forgot. And brand new author. <laughs> yeah. Brand new author. Yep, yep, yep. So we're excited to talk about that also. Yes. So yeah. So just, you know, I guess one of the things we wanted to get into, like, first of all, was obviously you're much more than an author and an educator. You're also an entrepreneur. And, you know, just from our previous discussions that we've had, we talked about you having multiple million dollar businesses. So just wanted to kind of get an idea of what skills do you feel helped contribute most to your success as an entrepreneur? So the skills, um, I am really good at galvanizing people, like getting the best out of people. And to me, the, the job that I had that prepared me for all of that was I was a school teacher for um, over 10 years before I started the Budget Nista. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that there's any job that you need the skill set to bring the best out of someone than a teacher. Mm -hmm. We have to create an environment where students are wanting to learn, are wanting to behave properly, are wanting almost like to please you. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I want Miss Tiffany to be proud of me, you know? And so you have to create an environment where that exists. And I use the, that skill set to, um, to, to get my audience on board, like, come on, we can do this. But I yeah. also use that skill set to um, get my, um, my, my team, I call them the unicorn squad, because I tell them they make magic happen every day, to get my team on board, because I know how to pull out the best in people, but not in a manipulative way, but yeah. so they can work joyfully. When you create a joyful environment for people to work, they bring you your best, because it, they, it's enjoyable to do so. And so that's how I used to do as a teacher. Like, can I make my classroom a magical place right. so students show up as their best? And can I make my, my companies a magical place so, so my employees show up as their best? No, that sounds great. So the new book mm -hmm. called Get Good With Money, 10 Simple Steps to Becoming Financially Whole. Yes. So what prompted you to write the book and what does it mean to be financially whole? So what prompted me to write the book was um, the teacher and me was struggling to see that the, the women in particular that I, that I was teaching, the million women, so we have a Facebook group where half of us hang out, half a million women are in that group. Mm -hmm. And I saw that they were succeeding, but I call it succeeding in silos. So think about it, If I, like I used to teach preschool. It's like they were learning their letters, but not their numbers. They were learning their shapes, but not their colors. So they were like, women be like, I budgeted, but I'm like, do you have savings? No. Mm -hmm. My credit score is good, but are you investing? No. Right. No, I'm investing. Do you have insurance? No. And the teacher in me was like, this is incomplete education, but the onus is not on the student. The mm -hmm. onus was on me, the teacher. And I thought, what am I doing incorrectly that I'm seeing students succeed in separate subject matters, but not holistically. And mm -hmm. I realized because I was teaching in separate subject matters. Like we would go really, really, really hard on credit. And so if you were new, you knew me as, oh, the budgetista that teaches credit. Then if you were new six months later, you would know me as the budgetista that teaches savings. And so depending when you came in, that's what you knew me for, the subject matter we were currently on. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how do I combine it all together so I can help you create the strongest foundation ever? And that's how Get Good With Money came about because it is like the prerequisite to the rest of your financial life. Financial wholeness is when 10 aspects, which we'll go over, 10 aspects of your financial life, the core 10 aspects are working together to build you the strongest financial foundation ever. It's yeah. like you get to live your, your greatest good, your biggest benefit and your richest life. So I want you to invest as much as you want and to, to trade options if that's what you choose and to buy homes and luxury vacations, but none of that is sustainable unless you have a strong financial foundation. Right. And that's what financial wholeness is. It looks like your holistic financial life and for you to create this foundation that the rest of your financial house can be built on. Mm. 
No, that makes a lot of sense. I guess, so I guess getting into it, what are the 10 steps? So 10 steps are first budgeting, savings, debt, credit, learning to earn. Those are, that's the foundation of the foundational steps, okay. right? Then it's investing for both wealth and retirement. Mm. It's also insurance because that part is super important so you can protect your wealth. It's also um, having a, a, a money team because you have to have other financial experts at your, at your disposal. It's net worth you have to own more than you owe. And then last but not least, but often we forget about is estate planning. You know, you mm -hmm. might think you don't have an estate, but if you have a, a bank account, you have an estate. If okay. you have uh, an insurance policy at work, you have an estate, so estate planning. So that's the, this is the, the core foundational and this yeah. is the next level of the foundation. So once you have those 10 things, like even recession, pandemic, quarantine will not shake you to the core because mm -hmm. That's what. That's why this book is so important to come out now because I started writing it when these things started happening because I thought, mm -hmm. oh, if I would have done a better job, we would have been more prepared, my audience. And so I was like, we're not gonna, I'm never gonna let them be unprepared again, that I'm going to create a tool that is going to ensure that if they follow these 10 steps and, and do them fully, that they'll be ready for the next hit because um, finances and, and, and money, those things are cyclical. We will see another recession again. One day we will see even another depression again. We might not see that, but it's going to come. We will see other economic ups and downs. And I want you to be ready for both. That makes a lot of sense. And I'd like to get into the foundation, at least the first five. And if mm -hmm. everyone who wants to learn about the remaining five, they can obviously buy the book. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, before we get into the first five, there's something that's in the foundation um, that I see a lot of people doing, or they reach for something that's in the latter, I guess the latter part of the book. So mm -hmm. investing yes. and getting out of debt is in the first five, right? So no, investing is in the second. I put that in the second because you're right. Everybody wants to invest yeah. before they've done budgeting, savings, credit, debt, mm -hmm. and learning to earn. Those are the foundational five. So that's what I was going to say. The getting out of debt like, doesn't it make more sense to get out of debt before you're investing? Because you still have, you're still in this hole, you know, financially and you're investing because that money could be going towards your debt instead of in the stock market. Like, what are your thoughts on taking care of debt first um, before investing? So like what I go over and get with money, it depends. So okay. Tony, if you've got expensive debt, double digit debt, then yeah. absolutely. So that means, let's just say double digit debt, your credit card um, interest rate is 20%. So that means that, you know, for every $1 that you're owing, you're paying 20 cents. Mm -hmm. So that is really expensive. Yeah. Now, if you have, if you're invested in the market on average, the last hundred years, the market has um, yielded like 10%, but to be super conservative, you can say seven to 8% is what you're likely to make in the market over the next 10 years. Okay. So if your debt costs you more than 7%, you are losing more than you're possibly going to gain. Now, if I had debt, for example, student loan debt, let's just say like, for example, my student loan interest rate was like 3.5%. I don't have to be aggressive with paying down 3.5% because if I've invested in the market, I can make seven conservatively, even though I might be losing three, I'm still coming out ahead. So okay. it, it, I always tell people it depends, Yeah. but you want to get rid of your expensive debt first, which is typically your double digit credit card debt before mm. you even think about investing for wealth. But right. I do say, honestly, you should prioritize investing for retirement, no matter what, because mm. God willing, we will all reach it to, you know, elder status. Yeah. And so like, I like to give my elder, I, I go through this exercise in the book because a study was done, a psychological study was done that found that we are disassociated from our older self. We don't see ourselves as older. And I said, why not lean into that? Why not pretend like your older self is almost like you're like a, a grandfather or grandmother to yourself? Why not imagine that person separately? So I named my elder self Wanda, right? And I think of Wanda and I said, huh, you know what? No matter what happens, Wanda still has to eat. Wanda still has to have a place to stay. Wanda still has to be safe. So no matter what debt is doing, I need to make sure that Wanda is taken care of because I don't know if there'll be family and friends around to look after her. So I make Wanda a priority, even over my debt, even over my expensive debt. So it's yeah. the only type of investing that I say, even if you have expensive debt to do simultaneously, investing for retirement is to take care of your Wanda 
investing for wealth is to take care of Tiffany now, you know? <laughs> so, but Tiffany can wait until the expensive debt is paid off, but Wanda cannot wait. You need to be doing both. Okay. All right. So thanks for answering that. So that was a quick segue. So going back to like the foundation, the mm -hmm. foundational steps, what, where do we start? So we start always, always, always with budgeting. Well, really you start, I have like kind of like a precursor, which is mindset. Because mm. if you do not reset your mind, you will be right back where you started. You were doomed to, res to resume the same mistakes over and over. So I go through a couple of exercises to help you to understand where you are, where your money mindset is. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the voice that's playing in your head when you're spending money and how to reset it in a positive way. And then once we do that, we go straight to budgeting. Budgeting is the cornerstone for the rest of your financial life. I don't care whether you're Oprah or whether you're newly homeless. Budgeting is critical. And so you have to start to build a budget and you want to create a budget um, where you're, you have the aligning bank accounts. Like, so for me, I like to have at least two checking, two savings, a separate checking account for bills, mm -hmm. a separate checking account for spending. The bills account does not have a debit card. The only way bills are paid is from that account. I don't want to be swiping away at my bill money by mistake. And I like to have two savings, one saving for emergencies and then one saving for, um, for um, goals. So your goals might be you wanna buy a house or a car or your goals might be I'm saving enough to work for um, investing later. And so two checking, two savings and, um, and at least a semi-automated budget. You want your money to kind of like flow and pay the bills for you um, if it makes sense for you and I show you how. So that's first and foremost, you start with budget building. Quick question there. I know some people might wonder, should they have all those accounts at the same bank or different banks or does it That's matter? That's a great question. So I like to have the two checking at a, what I call my brick and mortar bank, you know, the banks you see on the corner, mm -hmm. you know, like big bank, because we all travel so much these days. It's nice to have a big national bank, no matter where you go, you have Everybody. access, yeah. you know, but I do not like to have my savings at a big bank because big banks pay you a piece of a piece of a piece of a penny when mm. it comes to like your, your savings account. So you like to have your, your savings at a high yield savings account. Usually this is an online only bank. And in the book, you, uh, you would go to getgoodwithmoney.com and I have a toolkit where I have a list of like my favorite high yield savings accounts. Okay. So that way you can, I keep that list updated because I might say something now and then it's not so great later. Right. You know, so I like to keep it there because a few reasons. One, you get more money off the money you have saved there yeah. because they pay higher interest. Two, because your checking is at this bank and your high yield savings at this bank, that transfer process that we all do at Target, you know, you go to Target and you're like, ooh, I want that blender, even though I already have a blender, but it's red. <laughs> it goes with my kitchen. And then you look at your checking, your checking says, now, you know, we don't have blender money. And you're right. like, oh, but savings does. Hmm. Your savings and checking are at the same bank. The transfer is instant. Yeah. Your savings is here and your checking is here. It takes about three, I would say of 24 to 72 hours before savings meets your checking. Okay. And that's a good stop to be like, wait a minute, do I really need this? Right. You know, am I willing to wait 24 hours? Nah, I'm good. It's not that serious. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is the next step? Then? So the next step is savings. Like you, I call it saving like a squirrel. So um, I'm from the East coast. We have squirrels all over the place and we also have four seasons. So squirrels are super savvy savers and that during the, the spring and the fall, when their favorite meal, which is acorns, are in abundance, squirrels work the hardest and save the most. Mm. Human beings are the opposite. When we get our financial abundance, we're like, oh, drinks on me, drinks on me. Like, when are we going to go to Jamaica? When do we, you know, like we spend more right. and chill more when things, things are good. Why do I need to work so hard? Yep. Squirrels are like, mm mm mm. Because squirrels understand that the acorns they collect in the spring and the fall are not just for the spring and the fall. They are also for the winter. Yeah. We forget that if you got a raise, that raise is not just for February. What you don't know is in November, you might lose your job. Mm. That raise that you got in February was also for November. And so I teach you really how to save, how to do it automatically, how to do it as painlessly as, as possible and how to save like a squirrel. So you could be a super savvy saver and not, and not have the stress of not knowing what you're going to do. Um, should you lose your job or be furloughed or have pandemic or quarantine again? Right. Right. And is three months, the standard, I guess, um, amount of money you should have in the savings account, like three paychecks or three months worth of 
So three months is the bare, bare minimum. But I always say this, Tony, it depends on your industry. So it's yeah. three months, six months, 12 months, right? Depending on your industry. So my mom, before she retired, was a nurse. Three months was plenty. One month for her is plenty yeah. because nurses were always in high demand. They literally would go, like my mom is Nigerian. Well, as you know, right? So, right? So like they would literally go to different countries to recruit women to be nurses, wow. right? That's why you see so many like um, um, uh, West Indian nurses, African nurses, because nurses are in such high demand. They actually have to look outside the United yeah. States for nurses, right? Wow. So one month, two months, plenty. I remember in high school, she lost her job. Well, because her, her, um, her hospital closed. Mm. Our phone was ringing 24 hours a day with the hospitals like, please, 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 please come. Even in her retirement, they were like, ah, Biko, please, can you come back <laughs> and help service us with COVID? She's like, ah, no, my dad, right. I've, I've retired, <laughs> right? So, but my sister, she's an engineer and a black woman. Mm. It took her a year to find her first job. So mm. she might need to have six months to a year's worth of savings. So it's three, six or 12, depending on your industry. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So what is the next step then? So the next step is digging out of debt, not necessarily getting to be debt free completely, but you yeah. should have a debt, you should have a dig out of debt um, payment plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, I think I've heard you say something about attacking the lowest balances first, or would it be the lowest balances or the highest interest, or does it depend? It depends. So I like to, one is called the avalanche method. One is called the snowball method. The snowball method is when you attack the lowest balances first. Okay. And the reason why people like the snowball method, and I like to start with the snowball method is because you can get earlier success. Mm -hmm. Like if you've got a $50,000 bill and a $50 bill, let's go with the $50 bill first, just so you can start to get some early success. Mm -hmm. But then as you start to pay off some debt, now you can start looking at which debt is actually costing you the most. So if I have a $150 bill that has high interest and a $100 bill that has um, low interest, normally you would say, well, I'll pay the, whole, the $100 um, um, you know, debt first because it has a lower balance. No, I would go for the 150 because although the balance is slightly higher than this, it's also costing me much, much more money. Yeah. So I say start with with um, the, the snowball method with the lowest balance and weave in the avalanche method when you pay off the highest interest rates as it makes sense. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Until you uh, want to set it and, and, and semi forget that as well. Set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's up next? Next step. So next is credit, credit, credit scoring high. Mm -hmm. So first you have to understand, Tony, that the basic credit score that I want you to reach for is not a 50. So we're looking at FICO scores. There are so many different credit scores. There's Vantage, there's all these other credit scores, yeah. but most institutions use the FICO model. And that's a model that goes from, from 300 to 850, mm -hmm. right? And so 850 people think like that's perfect credit. No, they look at your credit like a range, just like an A is a 90 to 100. So in order for you to get an A in the credit world, you have to just start with 740. So I tell people, as long as you're over 740, I will still get an A just like somebody with 850. You don't have to have an 800 or 850 or 820. Me and you will still get the same offers for interest. So as long as you get the, the 740 um, range and above, then you should be fine. That's the aim for your credit score. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's up next? So last but not least in that foundational, fin foundational part of financial wholeness is learning to earn. It is so important. I think we've all learned this in the, that in the, in the last, you know, what's happened, you know, in the last year or so is that knowing multiple ways to bring income into your household, even if you don't activate them. So for example, when I was um, teaching, I remember thinking like, you know, I wasn't making much my first year. I was making like $39,000 a year. And I thought to myself, how do I make more money? Mm. And um, one of the ways I was able to make more money was I activated what I was already good at. I was like, well, Tiffany, Tiffany, you're a great teacher. So then I started to tutor, you know? So one of the ways to earn more is to ask yourself, what am I currently getting paid for? I don't have to learn a new skill set. I'm already teaching. And I got paid more because they looked and said, oh my gosh, this is already a teacher. But then also too, I also used to babysit because it was also an alignment. People were like, oh my gosh, who doesn't want an active preschool teacher babysitting their baby? It's, you're like, that's like the perfect person. Yep. So I was also able to demand more. So when you 
when you find side hustle money that's aligned with what you either have a degree in or what you're currently doing at work, you're able to one, not learn a new skill set and two, ask for more money. Mm. But the best place to learn to earn more is where you currently work. Inside Get Good With Money, I walk you through um, how do you um, um, align yourself and set yourself up to be able to ask for more money, no matter the economy. You know, like one of the things I have in here is your go me file, right? So this is what my sister calls her brag folder, meaning every time she helps to make the company either directly or indirectly helps them to make money or save money. She's like, mm, go me, like, look what I did. And she puts it down, the right. date, the time, all the things. And so when it's time for her reviews, she can say, this is how I actively contributed to the bottom line. So what then what happens is you're not asking for a raise. You're just like, mm, looks like I helped put a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket. Yeah. I'm merely saying I'd like to see 10,000 in mine. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, yeah. so I teach you exactly how to align yourself. So, so that way, when you do ask for a raise, the best place to make more money is where you currently already work. And then, and then yes, learning outside of that, how to earn a little extra income, even if you don't activate it. When I didn't need extra money, I didn't tutor. And when I needed it, I did. So everyone should know, even if they don't activate it right away. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Those tips are key. Mm -hmm. Building the financial, the foundation for financial success. Mm -hmm. You all want to find out the rest of the steps. Definitely go get the book. And Tiffany, tell us, where can they find the book? So you can find Get Good With Money, literally at the title at getgoodwithmoney.com. And let me just tell you, Tony, like, mm -hmm. I'm like oh, ashamed to say, but not really, because I can understand why I felt this way. At first, I didn't want to be on the cover. Wow. I was afraid that people would see a black woman on the cover of a money book and say, I'm not going to get it because you know, the, the times we live in. And I have to say, I'm really grateful for my agent Heather and for Penguin Random House for being like, that's exactly why you need to be on the cover mm. that you, like when I go to Barnes and Nobles, when I go to, you know, Target, when I go to all these different places, you know, I don't see, I go to the money aisle. I go to the business aisle. I don't see myself. Mm. And so we deserve to see ourselves. Yeah. And so I've got a stepdaughter. Um, she's 14. And I remember when the book came in and, you know, sometimes you think kids are not listening. Mm -hmm. And she said, can I have a copy? And I thought, oh, she's going to put it in her room. I heard her tell her friend on the phone, oh, girl, I got, I just got Tiffany's new book. I'm about to get my money right. <laughs> Meanwhile, at 14. <laughs> but I love that. Honestly, Tony, yeah. I love that. And the fact that like, if you think I'm chocolate, she is super chocolate. Super so the, chocolate. Her, mm-hmm. For her to see herself like reflected in me, yeah. and we can go someplace and she could be like, that's my stepmom. Look yeah. at her, she's on the cover of a book. And um, I'm just really proud of it. Like one of the things I wrote in the dedication is that this book is a love letter to my people. Mm. You know, that I put all that I knew to put in here. I also pulled in other experts that I like to call my budget Nista boosters because I wanted you to also be introduced to other black finance people, you right. know, to say, Oh, you know, it's the book is not just for black people, but right. you know, yeah. um, you know, I wanted you, I wanted them to see like, oh, like for example, there's some chapters that that's just not my my um my specialty, like mm -hmm. estate planning. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm not an attorney, but sure. my attorney, Tony Moore, she's amazing and dope and highly educated and went to Georgetown. And so I leaned into her for the estate planning chapter, yep. you know, for for investing, right? Um I leaned into a uh, Courtney of the Ivy investor and my friend, Kevin of building bread. So, mm -hmm. because I wanted Kevin is like his, his, um, um, his expertise is teaching you how to invest for retirement and Courtney's is teaching you how to invest for wealth. So I included all these other black and brown people into the book. So you can have exposure to them. Cause I don't believe in financial gurus. No one person knows everything, yeah. you know, but then also too, so you can, I wanted to model good behavior that you understood that it's good to go to different people for different things. Um, there are very few things that I'm proud of. Like I am when it comes to this book, it is, it was a labor of love. I know it's going to change so many lives. It's the book that you give that newly graduating college student. It's the book that you give your bestie. It's yeah. the book that you give your husband. It's really the book that I think is just going to change so many 
lives. I've already touched 1 million um, women, Black women in particular, and I want to touch 1 million more in their families. So yeah, you can get good with money literally at getgoodwithmoney.com. No, that's great. I mean, I know the book's going to change a lot of lives for sure. That extra 1 million that you're trying to reach, you are definitely going to reach them. (laughs) And thank you for doing what you do. You've been doing it for how long now? It's been over 10 years now, since 2010, when I really, really started the business. So over 10 years of service and 10 years as a teacher to black and brown children before that. Mm. So kudos to you. Keep up the great work and everyone go get that book. And Tiffany, thanks again for your time. And we'll chat soon. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care.